Hey guys, welcome back. I am back at Acura Berlin once again. I was here a couple months ago with the Integra. That one had a CVT, uh, and so they had a a manual transmission version available. And I have been in the manual before, and I talked about that a little bit in the other video, but. I wanted to come back and do a video with the manual and I wanted to talk about a few things that are kind of out there in the ether um, just about you know people complaining that this thing is just a fancy Civic because it's always been a fancy Civic I mentioned that before if you don't know that you've probably been living under a rock um, but even like in this center console deep in there we've got blueprints for an early civic so <laughs> it's pretty clear this thing has always been a civic but that's not a bad thing um, and i wanted to compare this one to the civic si a little bit because with all the markups going on and everything a lot of people are cross shopping this with a civic si um, and the last thing i want to touch on is the people some people are complaining about um how it's you know it's seven thousand dollar option to get the manual or something okay so well let's touch on that one first because that's quick so it's not a seven thousand dollar option to get the manual you just have to buy the top spec which i guess potato potato a little bit so you have to get the top spec but you do get a lot of extra features with that and they call it a manual no cost option for the top spec because the CVT and the manual in the A-Spec tech package are both the same price at just under $36,000. But you actually end up getting more if you get the manual because you get a more aggressive throttle mapping uh, and you get a limited slip differential. So it's really no cost to get um, a third pedal. That counts as an extra too. You get extra features uh, you get the nicer seats some people have complained about the red leather in here i kind of like the red leather some people have said it's like too shiny i think it actually looks pretty nice um, but then you get the suede seats definitely more comfortable than the si i think it's more comfortable my wife really thought the seats in the si were really comfortable though i wish we you know, but um you get the heated seats that's a big deal here in the u.s if you're in canada you got the heated seats in the si anyway of course you get the hatchback you get some more kind of safety features and stuff um you know some similarities here we still have the same super light um super light clutch pedal not my favorite but it works out for the daily drive and for something like this that's going to be more of a commuter um whereas the si is a little bit more aggressive not that that's not a commuter car but you know having the light pedal in something that's definitely made to commute um, is not quite as big of a deal and then we've got the same super tight gearbox i love how tight the track is takes some muscle very springy very connected feeling love this gearbox no complaints at all and it's crazy that you can get this in something that's considered entry-level luxury okay now in terms of driving dynamics this versus the Civic Si so it rides a lot softer because we have the adaptive suspension that was kind of to be expected but even you pop it into sport mode here it's not going to get as stiff as the SIs. So if you want that like can, real connected, kind of stiff, tight through the corners feeling, it's not going to do quite as well as the SI. We still do have the limited slip differential, as I mentioned, and we've even got the rev matching, the auto rev matching that came from the last gen, the FK8 Civic Type R. <laughs> And then is in the Civic Si and is in this and it's just as seamless in this it works out great and if you don't like it you can turn it off you can heel toe fine um, you know the pedals are spaced nicely for that that's all the same as the Si but we still got the sport the normal the individual mode but in this one you can change your steering feel you can change your throttle mapping a little bit and you can change um, the suspension setup and so Look at that tight U-turn. 
Okay, so I was planning to come in here and say, you know, this is not nearly as engaging. It's way softer. Um, not not as good dynamically, but I, it's better than I remember it being. So I'm gonna use my words here a little bit um, before I even say them. But it is a lot softer, that's still true. You know, even in sport mode, it doesn't get nearly as stiff uh, and as tight. It still handles corners pretty well. Um, it's just not quite as stiff, so it doesn't feel quite as engaging. It feels a little bit more floaty. And the steering gets pretty tight. I still think the Civic Si was maybe a little bit heavier in terms of steering feel in sport mode. Um, but this is much better than what I remember. And then you can pop it out into comfort mode. That's sport normal and comfort. And it eases off so much. It's crazy how, how big of a difference that really makes. Um, you know, because it's really soft, really smooth. The throttle is really delayed, which kind of bugs me. But, you know, that's for efficiency, that's for comfort, that's for getting off the line a little bit more smoothly. And a lot of cars do that nowadays. So, for the daily commute, this thing is clearly going to be the more comfortable one and then you want to bomb down some back roads every once in a while you're still gonna have a great time in it and it's just such a joy to shift oh that actually makes it a little harder to engage oh i don't like comfort mode yeah that delay and throttle makes it a little tougher to engage it and to engage uh first gear there i don't really like that Okay, but I'd probably leave it in normal or sport most of the time, or the individual mode. Okay, so it's softer. It's a lot softer. Steering still gets nice and heavy. The gearbox is still excellent. Clutch is still too light, but it's good for a commute. A lot of people complain about the engine. It does have the same engine with the same tuning um, as the Civic Si, so we're still looking about 200 horsepower from the 1.5 liter turbo. You know, the dyno sheets are saying, you know, maybe closer to 230 probably. But um, a lot of people are complaining about 200 horsepower. It's like, this is still entry level luxury though. So I just want to bring those people back down to earth a little bit here. So we're looking at entry level luxury, like uh, entry level IS, you know, a Mercedes A-Class, maybe an Audi A3, you know, 200 horsepower is really not far off from those um, so I don't know where people are getting the idea that like an entry-level luxury car is supposed to have 300 400 horsepower but if you are one of those people then that's what the type s is for you know, we've got the type s coming it's gonna be tuned like the Civic type R there's your 300 horsepower and I'm sure it's gonna be a watered-down monster just like this is a little bit of a watered-down Civic Si and that'll be a little bit of a watered-down Civic Type R. But if you just want a great manual transmission and you want a nice commuter, soft and comfortable when you want it to be, but also can <coughs> can kind of be aggressive without breaking the bank. Yes, it's front wheel drive, but it has a limited slip differential. Could compete pretty well with like a Mazda 3 Premium or something, but you know, that has the torsion beam in the back and it doesn't have a limited slip differential. You could put it with Civic Sport Touring even. Uh, if you wanted something a little softer, that again doesn't have the limited slip differential. And you do get the hatchback, but the interior is not quite as nice. And that's pretty much it for the segment if you want to have a great manual transmission. And this is easily the best manual of all those, of, of, of that group. It's way better than the one in the Civic, the regular Civic, uh, same as the one in the Civic Si. Way better than the one in, in the Mazda, though I do like the clutch pedal better in the Mazda because I feel like even though that one is also super light, it's still a little more, feels a little more communicative. And the gearing is nice and short. I really like the way it's geared actually. I can't really ring this one out a lot. I have had the chance, you know, I got to ring out the Civic Si a little bit. I got to ring out one of the press cars a little bit for this. I just didn't get a video for it. This one only has 
20 miles on it. I'm not going to ring it out. They still got to sell this. That's all I got for today. A little bit more rambly than normal. Um, just wanted to sort of get some thoughts out on this. And I wanted an excuse to get back into an Integra with a manual transmission. Uh, if you want something a little less rambly, watch the Civic SI video. Watch some of the other videos I've got on the channel. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to stay tuned.